we can do. So with that, uh, I would like to introduce Jim Keller. Uh, Jim is our corporate vice president and head of our core development at AMD. And uh, I've known Jim for many years, and it's just been a pleasure the last two years uh, to be working with you right, and thanks. making a difference here. Jim, why don't you grab a chair? I'll sit next to you, and we'll, All right. we'll chat a bit with the, with the group here. You know, um, you and I have been at this for many years in the industry, and, and we've seen you know, change after change. And you know, you've been such a, a part of it. And you, know, you look at it you know, from your days back at DEC Alpha to you know, even at AMD on the hammer designs and uh, startups and Apple, you know, you've been making you know, a lot of change in the industry. Jim, tell us a little bit about AMD. Um, you know, you've been here over two years. What, mm -hmm. what, what drove you to come back to AMD and what, what were your thoughts? Oh, that's a funny way of putting it, what drove me to come here. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I joined AMD because I love processor design and I love complicated system design. And AMD was looking at taking a big swing uh, on the next generation. Um, there's definitely been some, some problems and issues over the years. We have some great products. You know, I love the fact that we're in the consoles. We're in really power efficient processors all over the place. But we were looking at taking a big step forward. So working with some great people, leading a big team, and doing something new was kind of the challenge for me. Um, and it's been really fun. It's been almost two years. And we've delivered a number of products already. And we're looking in the next two years of doing some really new big things. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you're running a big team. And I know we, we, we talked about that when, when we recruited Jim to run the, the course team. Uh, we said, look, we're not going to create two different teams, one doing ARM and one x86. I said, Jim, can you run the team that, that does both? Right, that bring this together. And I get asked the question a lot, Jim. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you guys, how can you do this? You know, you're adding ARM into the mix. You know, doesn't this blow out your, your uh, development expense? What, how, do you, you know, how have you gone about yeah. this? So one obvious way to do it is have two different teams, double your effort, or cut the energy you put on one thing and a half. And that obviously isn't the right way to do it. So mm -hmm. um, it turns out high performance computing is mostly about high performance features, verification, methodology, CAD, all kinds of things. Those things are all common. Uh, the instruction set actually is important. Um, so the ARM ecosystem, the ARM architecture is, is very new. It has some inherent efficiencies in it, which we think is really cool. But in terms of the overall effort, you know, we get so much leverage out of stuff that it, it's not just a double effort. And interestingly enough, going through the process of designing ARM has given us a whole bunch of new ideas which I think actually drives better core design going forward. The other thing is, we've talked about today, you know, a lot of people have tried to do a completely new thing, boil the ocean, and they screw it all up. And, you know, we have a step-by-step -step plan. Seattle is a software infrastructure play to get that working. Mm -hmm. In 15, we build SOCs that are ambidextrous, so we've got the plumbing right, yeah. fabric memory controller, I.O. system. We also brought up a whole verification infrastructure for ARM on ARM's processor. And my guys, I got to tell you, they were all excited when they thought they found a bug in the ARM processor with our tools. Turns out it was a bug in our tool, but um, <laughs> I'm still waiting for that email, Simon. I'll shoot it to you. We'll, <laughs> we'll get that done. So we brought up an ARM verification infrastructure that was really good to apply to our next generation core. So as we do a new processor, it's not our first time doing high performance or 64 bits. And actually, we've already been working on ARM tools for quite a while. So we're, we're making good progress on that. Excellent. You mentioned those <laughs> ARM tools. Uh, you know, and you heard me talk earlier about that ARM ecosystem. You know, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, you, you, you've got deep experience at both. You know, do, you see, do you see some advantages that you're leveraging with this ARM ecosystem? Um, well, the big fundamental thing is the ARM V8 architecture is actually quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, it has more registers. It has a proper three instruction set. Our three operand instruction set, uh, the amount, <clears throat> we kind of think of it as we put, spend less work in transistors on in decoding instructions and, in, and dealing with the complexity of x86 and more transistors on performance. Yeah. So that's a pretty straightforward proposition that gives us more performance and we can also turn more performance into better efficiency. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty cool. And, and what about power? I mean, you, as you've, you know, if you look, you started with a tuning A57 and then you've got the from scratch uh, design that we call K12. 
Um, you know, how, how has that worked in terms of uh, leveraging ARM and, and your own uh, designer's expertise to optimize power? Yeah, so it's interesting. So AMD has two families of processors today. You know, the bulldozer family focused on really high frequency, Jaguar family, super small cores. You know, in our new generation, what I told my team is we got to take the DNA of both, the best of both, and put it, put it there. So this is really nice. We know how to do high frequency design. Yeah. We know how to do dense design. ARM gives us some inherent architectural efficiency, and the combination is pretty good. You know, it's probably a, a perfect lead-in for my next question, and that is, you know, given that, what's your sense of our differentiation? We all know there's lots of players out there. Um, you know, uh, there, there are other licensees of the ARM architecture. What makes you confident? Um, so we have the world's best graphics. You know, that's great, mm -hmm. right? We know how to do high-frequency designs. We know how to do power-efficient designs. Uh, where we see adding on to the ARM infrastructure is, or ecosystem is, we've done servers, we've done scalability, we've done high frequency. We can extend the range that ARM's in. That's a nice play for us. Excellent. So I got I to gotta ask uh, one more thing at you because it's something I'm enthused. I, I get a chance to walk, walk the halls and uh, talk to your team working on uh, K-12. I mentioned it earlier. What's the sense of, you know, of your team you know, working on K-12? We've got you know, deep expertise in XA6. We continue to, you know, to not let the foot off the gas in XA6, and yet there's this whole new arm in our offering here. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the, uh, you know, what's the, the thought of your team? What's the, what's the excitement? Well, I have to say, my team was a little daunted. We're going to do a new from scratch X86 core. Mm -hmm. We're going to do an arm core. We're going to build a new methodology, right? So there's a lot of clean pieces of paper in that plan. So. My ask to the team was, let's go design the best possible thing. That's the important thing. Great product. We did the high-level design as a clean piece of paper. And it turns out we have all this technology already. We know how to use dense metal stacks. We know how to build lots of components. And we brought that in. We filled in the plan pretty fast. So the engineers are excited to be doing something new. You want to do processor design today, you should work at AMD, because we're doing real new things. But we're not starting from scratch. Like, we have a lot of components there, so we make progress pretty fast. It's like a supercharged new design plan because since we're taking off-the-shelf stuff and ideas we worked out, that's really fun. On ARM in particular, we had to go from scratch because we didn't have any traces, performance models, isomol. So we work with ARM. They have a really good instruction set simulator. We quickly built Linux and ran traces. We started building workloads. On x86, we have tens of thousands of traces on all kinds of benchmarks. On ARM, we started from scratch. But you know what? The, it's kind of fun to have that kind of piece, that kind of play to go on. So people got pretty excited about it. And then it turns out, learning about ARM, we leveraged in x86, and yeah, we're making a lot of progress. That's excellent. That's excellent. Well, look, Jim, thanks very much. And uh, why don't you join me back on stage in uh, just a few minutes, and we'll have uh, some Q&A later. But okay. we'll uh, conclude this piece. Thanks very much. Great.